I now call to order the New Carlisle City Council meeting, Monday, August 20th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Mrs. Berner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lowry. <coughs> Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. Fantastic. Uh, if you don't mind all standing for the invocation of the night. I'm bowing your heads. <coughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to assemble in this great community in which we all live, Lord. Let us continue to make striving goals for our city to move this city and uh, the people in our city forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you don't mind saying this, let's pledge the fact tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> <laughs> Action of the minutes. So moved. Second. Second by Cook. Mr. Cook, yep. All right. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. <clears throat> Tammy? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Minutes accepted six zero. Fantastic. And then communications that are done tonight. City manager's report, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. And then we'll start off with our finance discussion with our finance director, Ms. Watson. Hi, good evening. Um, our total revenue for July is $478,582.76, and our total expenses was $522,726.23. Our year-to-date totals, um, our revenue collected is $3,552,002.41, and our total expenses is $3,105,950.20. So we're still um, spending less than what we're bringing in each year so, so far this year, and that's a good thing. Council, any questions? No questions. Right. Thank you, Mrs. Watson. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And moving on with the city manager report, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Howard Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, tonight we'll stop, start off with the service departments. Uh, you have noticed we completed some centerline road paint, uh, painting on Lake, Church, Clay, Smith, and Addison, New Carlisle. Uh, the county had a bid go out for County Western and Clark County to get painted and we got lucky and we were able to hop on that and get that done for a really cheap cost. So we're going to try to get that every other year as they do it. And then um, we will get the center line probably for the state routes on the next round and then they'll be um, resurfaced in 2023. Uh, again, hydro flushing schedule will be out soon. Um, we will get that to you uh, probably at the next meeting. Pothole patching has begun and we are moving as fast as we can with the pothole patching machine. Um, amongst the other few things that we have gotten um, tasked with here recently that have some uh, critical uh, opening dates or things like that. Various road projects uh, for White Pine, Greenheart, and Fir Firwood that are being resurfaced. The curb and gutter repair work started 813 and they will be completed. They completed all the concrete work but they got a little bit of restoration with dirt to finish tomorrow. That will be done. Spoke with the county today and they are not sure when the milling machines will be in to do the actual mill and overlay. It could be two weeks, it could be a month, a uh, month and a half. They're, the company is just that backlogged along with other contractors uh, right now. And uh, wastewater plant influent building upgrade. I, I have basically an ordinance uh, drafted uh, to, for Mr. Bridge to bring to council to start uh, putting together the actual um, financing, the bidding, the whole nine yards to go ahead and get this project finally started. We have um, spoke with the finance director to look at, because uh, work is gonna be a little cheaper to get it in this one bid, we're gonna add some 2019 work for that wastewater plant and get it in with the, basically the 2018 budget. So um, we are told that prices are looking at 10% uh, to 15% increase in equipment for late 2019. So we're gonna try and uh, move up a project for that and see if the financing uh, allows us to do that for uh, still cost savings. 
And still the traffic signal upgrade project is still in the right of way phase. We have had a few property owners come back and just take the um, appraised value um, of what the property is worth, nothing more. It's been uh, basically um, quick, quick and easy stuff. There hasn't been, there's no negotiations. Nobody has balked at the project from a property owner standpoint on any of those. And uh, also I will be bringing uh, just some information about once we get the uh, street tree surfaced up on White Pine, Greenheart, and Firwood. White Pine currently has um, two stop signs on opposite sides of the road at two different intersections. It absolutely doesn't make sense up there to have when you travel north on White Pine to stop at Bittersweet, but the people coming south don't have to stop and vice versa with Firwood. They have a southern approaching stop sign with nothing going north. So they do not meet any of the guidelines for um, traffic control there. So I am looking at removing those two stop signs to keep Bittersweet stopping and um, Firwood and Hemlock stopping, but allow White Pine to just be a normal flow through street like Greenheart, Applewood, uh, Spinning, and the rest of the other streets adjoining. So like it used to be? Like it used to be? Like it used to be. Fantastic. I grew up in that area, so. <laughs> And that is all I have for uh, tonight. I can enter entertain any questions on the report or anything that we might be working on in the service department. Council? Mr. Lowry. Mr. Kiko, I think for the report, um, just a few questions. I don't know if you can answer these right off the top of your head. How many vehicles does the service department have that are used on a daily basis, you know, as far as uh, trucks and uh, the trucks that used for street repair and things of that nature? Anywhere between seven and eight a day. Okay. That's not all of them, but that's seven or eight that are actually usually being driven at any given time. What types of vehicles does that include? <clears throat> that's anywhere from an F-250 pickup truck to an F-550 dump truck. Um, that is not including tobacco or um, a vac truck, but that is our standard uh, vans, dump trucks, things we use every day for doing different work. Okay. Well, the reason why I was asking is, is just, I don't know why, over the past couple of weeks, I've happened to be going through town and just happen to pass a couple of our different vehicles. And I know that we stretch our vehicles out as much as we can, uh, like we do with the Sheriff's Department. And just some, just personal thoughts here. I know that we, we finally got our deputies and some good cruisers because we know that those, that's their more or less their office and that's what they do their job out of. Um, how would you honestly grade, you know, one being horrible, five being great, your fleet of vehicles or do you have some vehicles that are just completely god awful and they shouldn't be being used i, I do have uh, one vehicle that um is operable it is safe but it's the cemetery truck and it's basically missing a lot of its bed and uh, fenders cab corners things like that so uh, you can see daylight in it uh, the next level is a couple trucks we bought back in 2001 those are at around a four and we have a lot of threes working on fours uh, we have also taken what I would call four or five, which was our IH dump, and put a new dump body on it, and that probably took us back down to like a two. So, so, uh, so your grade was one being better. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you, or must not have caught on to you. But yeah, one was yeah, five is the worst. Okay. So I would say most of our fleet is three or or worse, and we have a couple of vehicles that I would consider some twos, um, and we have one that's a one. That's I mean, it's near brand new. Okay. Um, is that something that we could possibly look at as far as, you know, I'm not saying go out and buy brand new fancy 2019 trucks, but look at gov deals and maybe just see some of the things, you know, they should be driving around with something you can see light through the cab. I mean, that's just cool. Um, I will look at some other places. Um, gov deals is not that type of place for that, but there are manufacturers that are these dealerships that have uh, one and two year old trucks that they've made and they sit there and they just don't meet maybe some demand of some other municipalities or private companies they get out there and you can get a pretty good discount on those what, like what's the, the red pickup truck used for the red one it is no longer that that was a six on the scale it's actually uh working on gov deals right now it is will be probably on gov deals within the next couple of weeks we already have it listed and i have it pretty much on there so i mean is that something you but overall something you're wanting to maybe look at here in the near future I've been looking at vehicles for some time. Most of the bad vehicles are the street department, and that's usually the, the least, um, gets the least revenue 
uh, for for the funds. The ones from water and wastewater, um, we've done some swapping around. Like we moved the van from wastewater to water because it was in better shape because wastewater didn't need as much. And we give the black Jeep, which came from city building. Yeah, it came from the for the city manager, and we give it to wastewater because they needed someone just to drive around and do do some little stuff. So we've been kind of moving some vehicles around just to keep what keep what we got and keep working. What about the uh, snow removal trucks? Are those different? Than, those aren't the same as the, the pickup trucks? You're Correct. Those are completely different. Um, we have two good medium duty trucks. One's got the new dump body on it. The F-550 <coughs> seems to be still pretty sturdy and still going strong, um, but it is going on 17, 18 years old. So, I mean, it still seems to be doing pretty good, but, you know, we do a lot of good maintenance to it. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Council, anything else? Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Kitko, <clears throat> if I remember a few meetings back on your report on the uh, water plant and, and feuding building, you was looking at a two to a four year note. Why is it now three to six? Because we are possibly adding in that, ni that 19 equipment. And when I get the quotes back from a couple institutions, then we'll find out uh, adding that this, the 19 equipment is 90,000 or so more. So we wouldn't be able to absorb 90,000 within that same two to three year range. We'd probably have to bump it up a couple years. And keep the payment the same? I, I knew that was coming <laughs> Thank out. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I just knew it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good jingle. Thank you, sir. All right. uh, I have a question, Mr. Kitko. When they repair the curb and gutter for the, uh, for the project, what's it keep for the uh, white pine, uh, firwood, and greenheart? What typically goes to one curb getting fixed and then skipping another curb that is the looks worse than the curb that they did fix yeah the only thing i asked is i got stopped at the gas station last night yeah it's and the that. most extreme it's the ones that were holding water okay the, yeah they that they've uh, collapsed at holding water those are the ones i did this year um just like white pine now granted and give it a year or two a couple years you won't know the difference because the wall will be looking pretty dark and you know, okay. they all look similar. But yes, those are the ones that held water that would allow for the overlay to match properly. Okay, fantastic. I, the, that's why I was asking. So I got asked this, so I didn't know, but I would find out. Yeah, those I are the most know. extreme. All right, thank you. Council, mm -hmm. anything else for Mr. Kitko? Nope. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Moving on with the senior manager's report, our fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Trusty. <laughs> Mayor, council, and public. For the month of July, the New Calau Fire Division responded to 100 EMS calls in the city, 14 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to seven fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. Uh, year to date, right now, we're at run number 863. We're still averaging over 100 calls a, a month. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either from Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 52 already being on a response. We had three overdoses, EMS runs for the month, with one of those being a DOA. We answered two mutual aid uh, EMS calls for Clark, Bethel Clark, and we answered two for Pike Township. We did have one arson fire in the city in July, and that was turned over to the State Fire Marshal's Office for investigation. Council, any questions for Mr. or Chief Trustee? No. Chief, I just want to say, keep doing what you're doing. I do love the fact that we see that when our medic we, we call mutual aid, it's because we're already out on a response, because prior to you, we weren't on a response, and we had mutual aid coming to save us every time, so I think you've done a great job, so keep up the good work. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay, you have something? Chief, uh, just wondering, do we, how's the manpower on days in the city now for the fire department? Right now, we're average on the um, part-time program. We're running right around 43. We're in the midst of hiring right now. Uh, we just brought on one new paramedic, uh, level two firefighter paramedic, and she is probably another week out of her training time to be actually put on to shift. And we're actively hiring people at this time. Right now, the problem is just finding paramedics to hire. We are also hiring EMTs also, uh, but the pool of paramedics to hire is just not there. So is the hope to have enough people during the daytime to put our second medic in use? Second medic, no. No. That's very, uh, very during the day, that's very rarity. Okay, you just said we had 45 people in the daytime. On the, on the part-time program. 
Okay. Pardon. That doesn't mean 45 people are available every day. <clears throat> How many do you have available during the daytime? Oh, during the day? Yes. During the daytime, there's usually two at Elizabeth Township, two in the city, and, in, and some days there's a battalion officer on also. Okay. All right. Thank that, you, sir. And if there's a battalion officer, he would respond uh, as a first responder to the second, on a second medic run mm -hmm. and still call for mutual aid. Okay. Thank you, sir. Council, anything else? <clears throat> Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, Chief Trustee. Moving on with the city manager report, our uh, police discussion with our uh, police administrator, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and citizens. Our July report, our deputy dispatched 61 calls. Assaults, we had two. Domestic violence, we had six. Theft, we had two. Uninjury injury crashes, four. Injury crashes, uh, the parole deputies took none. Citation six, drug complaints zero, overdose we had five, and attempted suicide uh, we had five. And this is just a reminder for everyone is where the school started, so please pay attention to your driving in and out of the school zones and save yourself approximately $200. That's what the citation will cost you. If you improperly pass a school bus, it's a mandatory court appearance, and if you not show up in court for that, uh, a warrant will be filed for your arrest. And if you have a court date and time, and let's we'll say 10 o'clock is the time, and you show up at quarter after, um, you, will have, you still will have a warrant. It'll probably serve to you, but then. Uh, what I'm trying to say is don't miss it, the time of court. Two minutes after is like missing it. Uh, new problem, we'll be receiving two new deputies to replace Deputy Cruz and Anderson. Deputy Joseph Liming was assigned to New Corral June 25th, and Deputy Moody will be assigned to New Corral September 3rd. Both are looking forward to meeting the citizens of New Corral and controlling in the city. And those are going to be really two good people. And as always, as always please contact the Clark Sheriff's Department, 937-328-3560 if you witness anything suspicious. Uh, this could be the phone call we need to save the crime. And I can't tell you enough please keep, be careful around school buses uh, if you don't know what to do just stop they're only there a few seconds uh, maybe 30 would be uh, would be a good guesstimate so our kids are our number one safety up here um, plan a little extra time especially in the morning times uh, school bus drivers are very unique they have any place from just a few kids to a bus full, and that's, uh, well, we're about the only country in the world that can do that. So hats off to them, and, and we're going to make sure that our children should be safe. So that's my report for tonight. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer. Council, any questions? Sergeant Underwood, we had spoken earlier about the noise, possible noise ordinance that would be introduced. And yes. I just wanted to, if you don't mind going over what you had shared with me earlier today. Okay, we currently have a noise ordinance. Uh, after 10 o'clock, it's 25 feet. Uh, and there's some exceptions with city workers and, and emergencies. So, but we do have a, an ordinance for that. And in the daytime, if it is an, an annoying sound, uh, we can also issue citations on that. This is, a, it, this is something that I think you want to be really careful with because you might open up a can of worms along the way with, with introducing a new ordinance. I think what we have will work and is effective. Um, but the situation we have discussed is in the last several years we've only had two complaints and the people that live around the person has never filed a complaint so um, I, I think you might start something that might cause a lot of grief for a lot of people just uh, our deputy mentioned tonight we talked to her she was on patrol this weekend uh, we never received a complaint and um, our deputies will follow through with it. If you have something you need to discuss with me, my hours uh, through the week, I, I generally am seven to three. I would be happy to make a meeting any place you would like. 
and talk to you about any issues or problem any citizen has. That's what my job is, is try to, to work out things. And if you're unhappy with our service, uh, let me know. Uh, we're not going to do everything perfect. Uh, we'll, we're short on deputies up here. Uh, we have one working up here per shift. And if we have a domestic, uh, yeah, we, we may not show up for an hour or so. It looks like this might be the case here is we, we've had some complaints and we have to prioritize them. Now, the whole county does that. Uh, just because the deputies assigned up here doesn't, going, doesn't mean you're going to get an immediate response unless it is an emergency. And we'll leave what we're doing for an emergency, but for a loud noise or a traffic complaint, you know, we'll follow up on that, but we're not going to leave an emergency for that. So I wish it was different. It's like that in every agency that I know of. Um, if we could have 10 people up here working and you're going to have a day when none of them showed up when in the time period you wish they would be there. Uh, we, we can even talk to people. We don't have to issue citations. If, if we know there's a, a legitimate problem, I'll go to the door and talk to the folks. I, no one wants a citation to be written or, or to be written to. Uh, maybe, you know, we can head off some. So, uh, anything I missed or didn't cover? No, I think you covered it. Council, any questions? I do have one thing. Yes. Uh, if, if we do pass a noise ordinance and you start using decimals and things like that, uh, I, I think it's going to, it's going to change the way we look at noise complaints, but I think you're also going to have a lot of noise complaints. And a lot of that is sometimes people are just mad at their neighbors. Um, and a neighbor dispute is almost never sell, settled unless someone passes away or moves. It's terrible for us to work on. It's terrible for the neighbors. Uh, if you can get along together or work things out, uh, save yourself a lot of grief. I've been work I'm working on 28 years at the sheriff's office, and I can tell you the hardest things that we've dealt with are neighbor issues. So uh, we'll, we can have a meeting with both parties if necessary, in the same time, the same place. I'm okay with that, um, to try to hash things out. So sorry for being so long. <laughs> Mr. Lowry, you had a question? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, um, when you have complaints like that where uh, it's a noise or a barking dog or whatever it may be, the sheriff's department comes out and they go talk to the neighbor and the problem's fixed for five or ten minutes and then you guys leave and the noise comes back. I mean, is that is that something that happens a lot where it's the cat and mouse game between you showing up and telling them to turn it down and the dog will stop barking? It, it happens a lot. Out in the county, um, we don't have the luxury like we do here. Most of the time here, if you call us back and say, hey, it started up again, uh, that's gonna grab our attention. And we'll talk to the people. Who, a lot of times we have young adults in homes and mom and dad are out for the evening and there's a lot of noise. Uh, we'll, we, we will follow up on it. So yeah, and that, to answer your question, that happens all the time. And I like what you said earlier, and I think we've talked about it a lot of years. I think if we open this up, it's going to cause more problems than good because, I, I mean, me personally, I see if we set a decibel level, um, what, you know, then what does that include? Does that include the ball field when you're having your games? So the announcer that's over the, the, the uh, PA system announcing, uh, you know, the churches do events all the time, the parades, the festivals, the Christmas parades, uh, the pool, I mean, you name it, that could open up a lot of, a lot of issues I think I, I like your idea if that's what we need to do get them in a room together and, and let's figure out how to make it uh, work I mean I, I think this would be different if we had a petition of people complaining right. that's not the case right now we don't and um, I'll do what we can to help like I said I'm open up for mediation uh, to siding but in the daytime if you're listening to the radio we're going to have a lot of people guilty of leaving the radio on for a while. So I'd like to try to work this out before we uh, go.
go any further with it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Council, anything else? Yes, yep. Thank you so much, Sergeant Underwood. I appreciate it. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And moving on with the city manager's report under informational items. Uh, new copier, I did get three quotes. Uh, they range from 7950 to 10538 We received quotes from Donalyn McCarthy, Comdoc, and Woodhall. Uh, we will be purchasing without legislation from Woodhall, and we will not be putting any legislation in council because it is underneath that $20,000 spending threshold, and we do have some money and some line items that we can pull from. Um, very busy time of year upcoming. Uh, so if you guys look at that, we are going through our state audit right now. Every year the city gets audited by the state of Ohio uh, for our financial procedures. Uh, they have started making recommendations, namely centered around policy that the city needs to update and or is lacking. So some of the things that will be coming up is a policy uh, on petty cash, blanket purchase orders, a disaster recovery plan, and then also investment banking. I am currently drafting uh, these. Uh, every one of these things that I am drafting will need council approval. Policy from the city manager, I'm also working on updating a, the non-discrimination policy that the city already has in place. Um, again, city uh, council will need to approve that as well. Our union negotiations will be set for uh, hopefully sometime in mid-September. I will also be looking at annexation. Uh, further discussion will be needed between citizens, uh, the administration, and city council. And I will leave the question as, does the city have the funds for this endeavor with a question mark? That's something we can discuss as a group at a later date. Uh, also coming up, we, we have to start our CIP, which is our capital improvement plan. Um, that is a five-year capital purchase plan that we do every year. Further charter, that has to be submitted to council three months prior to the submission of our operating budget. Um, so our, we will be working on that CIP uh, in-house uh, next week. Uh, we'll have a resolution in front of council on 9-4 of 18. In between there, we will need a work session uh, sometime between August 27th and August 30th. Sorry for the short window. Um, and we also need a public hearing for that CIP as well. So the public hearing uh, possibly can go on prior to the 9-4 meeting. Uh, we uh, similarly did our tax budget. Uh, 2019 operating budget. Um, on my schedule, I have an intro ordinance on 12-3 with a second read on 12-17. We'll also need work sessions and a public hearing on that budget as well before council adopts it. We also have tonight in, in front of council are a few ordinances for street lighting assessments. Um, we did, uh, the administration did have to uh, recommend changing it from 58 cents to 60 cents. And I did a little um, example on this, just, uh, just so some people wanted to see the math on it. Um, so the example I gave here is you have 64 foot feet of frontage. And the old formula is you simply take that 64 and you times it by 0 .58. And then that, uh, that 3712 would get assessed your property taxes if you don't pay it at the city building prior to us sending it off to the auditors. Um, so at the old rate of 58 cents, it was 3712. And at the new rate, it's $38.40, so it's a $1.28 increase. Um, and again, to reiterate, we had to increase it because the company who we contract out with this, they lost the 5% discount that they were getting from Dayton Power and Light. So we had to make up that 5%. Um, the kicker with this, though, is you can actually come and pay that until September 5th at the city <coughs> building. And what that's going to do is that's going to save you the 4% auditor fee that they put on it once it hits their books. So if you want to save the 4%, please come into the city building. We have a massive printout of everyone's parcel in the city, and we can tell you how much you would owe for that street lighting assessment. <clears throat> we'll also have to amend our estimated resources for 2018 to be able to uh, uh, get some money and some line items. Um, also hoping for legislation to be introduced to council on that on 9-4, which is our next council meeting. Um, namely, our legal department needs to allocate additional funds to get us through the remaining of the year. And um, I have on here a motion to uh, approve or amend $75,000 from our reserves to go over there. And I would like to maybe have a discussion with council now about what is everyone's comfortable with with reallocating. I don't want to have to reallocate little, so we have to do the process over again. And whatever money that is underspent will just roll over until next year. But I would like to have um, maybe a, a motion or some discussion on that dollar amount so when the ordinance is in front of everyone, we kind of have a clear picture of which way we want to go. Council. Mr. Cobb? What is the purpose of that 75,000? 
to pay the remaining legal bills for the rest of the, to pay the remaining legal bills for the rest of the year. <coughs> the legal bills, what that involved Queen Creek and everything else? Oh yeah, everything that our attorney's done up until till now. Right now we're billed through June, so we gotta get through July, August, September, October, and November. Um, usually the December bill is paid out of the 19 budget. Now, you have a printout of all that? A printout of? What you're going to pay? We've already paid the bill, so they, we get billed monthly for it. I'd like to see the printout of what you paid. Okay, those legal bills are not public information. We can redact, so you'll see dollar amounts. Um, but every month when we get our finance report, um, is it on here? It's, it's mixed in with the general fund under 101. It's not broken out. So I can give you a history on that, but we will need to allocate money because there's only maybe a couple hundred dollars left in that line. Mr. Cobb, are you good? All right, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge. Sure. Uh, and you may not know the answer to this, but Mrs. Watson might. Miss Watson might. <laughs> How much have we spent on legal fees from January through January? Just under $75,000. Just under $75,000? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and how much is left in that fund? Um, maybe uh, you got Did you right just there. give me a zero? <laughs> it's, it, yeah, that's why we have to move some money over. We're already um, in the negative. How much are we in the negative? I think about $23,000 already. Twenty-three thousand. I think approximately. Don't quote me. I'd have to look at the figures exactly, but we're you know. I, I don't. I don't think we're negative yet. I think we're going to be negative. We. <coughs> okay, the July bill. Yeah. I okay. So. I don't think it's already negative. I think we got about a thousand left in there, positive. Not in the negative. We're in but it will be as soon as we get billed, and I think that's what she was saying. As soon as we get receive our July bill, then it will be in a negative. So I do understand what she's saying. There. Uh, <clears throat> did we recover the 5000 from a few Every, everything, meetings ago? Everything's been credited that needed to be credited. Okay. And you say you want seventy-five grand more? I would Is like to put a, a dollar amount in there that's going to comfortably through the end of the year. Because yeah. we still got some big ticket items to get through for the, for the remainder of the year. Mr. Bridge, may I ask Ms. Watson a question about this? Absolutely. Ms. Watson, what would you feel comfortable transferring in? You are our financial officer. Well, seeing as though I don't know all the, um, I don't know all the legal uh, things that we're going to be incurring, I, I, I do feel that there's a little concern with, you know, maybe we need to take a look at how much we're spending on, on a law director. It is a lot of money and, and if we continue to spend like that it is it is going to hurt our financial situation so not that it's not mm -hmm. needed I'm not I, I'm not qualified to say what we you know I just started so I don't know what we're doing there but it is a lot of money and and if you continue to have to spend that kind of money we're really gonna have to take a look at some things and so um, I know that Randy has more of a, a, a to handle on how much more we might need for, because of what we're going forward with. I, I don't know that, just being here just two months, I don't know what, what we've got coming. Uh, but it is, um, from what we've already paid, it seems like we're going to need that money to pay more. So am I comfortable? I'm never comfortable with going back into your reserves. <laughs> I, I'm a finance director. It's about saving money, trying to cut corners, see where we can, you know, get this city in a a uh, stable financial situation where we have a, a lot of money in reserve, and that's that's my job. So when you ask me a question like that, obviously I'm going to say I'm not comfortable with ever going into reserves. But legally, I mean, I can't I can't do my job without putting more money into the line item to pay for these bills that we've incurred already. Okay, so. that was my question. Does anyone else have any questions or motions, Mr. Lowry? So you're looking to get this done tonight, correct? Right? No, no, I just want a, a motion that is everyone okay? So when I, we do the legislation, we have a solid number in there. We're not going to have back and forth while the legislation is actually going. Okay. That's what he's saying. <clears throat> Would you be comfortable with 50000 
You guys can put whatever you want in there. If there's no money left in, it's say if we go through in November, we're going to have to go through the legislation piece again. Because, I mean, you guys do understand if you put 75 in there and it's been 30, then the 45 just rolls over. That It's a sewn line item. So either you'll be charging more money for our attorney to review the legislation a couple times, or you just go ahead and put the 75 in there, or 50, however you guys want to do. I wouldn't go too low because if it runs out, we're going to be right back in this position and could be October, November, December, depending on how long it goes through it. Council, any thoughts? I feel like it's only Mike and I talking. Go ahead, Mr. Lindsay. The, uh, so the July bill is coming, is it correct, Ms. Watson? I would assume so. I mean, I, we, I, we haven't I, received I'll, it yet. Legal bills get sent to me. Okay, we haven't received it yet. No, we'll, we'll, we'll get that soon. If you guys want my recommendation, put 50 in there. We'll reanalyze in three months. All right. Does that sound good to council? I mean, it's comment. Comment. Go ahead. If we put the 50 in there, then I would, and hopefully council would agree with me, that, that we strongly try to keep it at 50 or, or less. In other words, not use the attorneys any more than we absolutely have to. Well, I have to use attorney a lot because our charter dicks takes me to. Well, I understand that. that. I understand and that. And if we have a lawsuit going stuff. on or a discussion among council right. members that take months. <clears throat> the, you know, there's only so much I can control. It's uh, city manager control. But the charter has, I mean, we have to review it for every piece of legislation we do. Every <coughs> contract we have, she has to approve on. So uh, the administration, we do a good job at keeping a tight dollar amount on the things that we occur charges for. Some things are out of the administration's hands when it comes to the law stuff. I have a quick question, real quick. Uh, Twin Creeks, I mean, I know he settled it, but then I go to the uh, uh, planning board meeting and I see Andy there. I like seeing Andy, <laughs> he's a good guy, but uh, w what's going on with that? We keep going back and forth, like, oh, it's done, but now we gotta get these covenants out of the way, and now it just keeps dragging on and on. Now, I don't know if it's us or if it's their attorney that's dragging it or what's going on. Uh, this is a very complicated process. From what I've been told, we're the first one in the state of Ohio to actually uh, absorb a, a disbanding HOA. Oh, great. Um, so, uh, but I think anytime you deal with such a complex issue and you have multiple attorneys involved, it's not going to go at the fastest pace. Um, right now, we just got a word from their attorney. They agreed to pay for the title searches because um, I didn't want to expend any money out of our budget. It's not our reason. It's not our fault they're disbanding. Yeah. So we had to wait for them to get uh, uh, approval from their attorney to uh, pay for those uh, title searches so we can get a clean title. <coughs> to parcels of land we're going to be inquiring. Um, we'll have our final planning board meeting sometime middle of September so they can get a, a, a good <coughs> understanding of what covenants are going to suggest you guys to pass. Okay. So it's been a long process, absolutely. Um, but it's been also been a very complicated issue. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to go to Mr. Lowry. He had a question first. Are you sure? Mr. Lindsay. On, on the, uh, thank you, Mr. Lowry. On the uh, title search, mm -hmm. or is that going to include title insurance in case they miss something? And 100 years from now, they come back and say, hey, you know, so-and-so owns this, and I want my land. Yes, it will. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. Uh, Mr. Bridge, I, I'm okay with going me personally. It's just me uh, going 55 and 60. Uh, I know that, you know, obviously you just got to discover twin creeks is a big issue and then you're all going to be involved. So, uh, I mean, you know, worst case scenario, we just you know, come back and do this again here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's just my two cents on that. Uh, so do we motion to authorize for $55,000 then? I did, Mr. Mayor. So I, I just want to clarify, Mr. Lowry, you're okay with sixty thousand? Yeah, on I'm on, okay. on a motion then. Yeah, I mean it's still okay. fifteen thousand less. <clears throat> Man, I think somebody should make that motion. <laughs> Mr. Lowry. Make the motion to okay uh, city manager to start the process of transferring funds of an amount of sixty thousand dollars for the attorney fees. Is there a second? Is there a second? No. no. I'll second. <clears throat> I have a question, if I could. Well, we have 
too much on the floor, so okay. we'll take okay. Mrs. Berner. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Cobb. No. Mr. Cook. No. Motion accepted four to two. Bridge. Anything else in your city manager's part? No, I'm good. I had one last question, and it was actually about the copier. Yeah. <laughs> so I know we got, we got stuck, stuck in there. Yep. Uh, are we buying this outright or renting? Yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. All right. And just so the audience knows, <laughs> that's what I like. We were getting quotes for these copiers in the first meeting we had. She sent me an invoice or a contract to purchase like $14,000. I'm like, seems like a lot of money. And she had in her paperwork another purchase order to buy outright. I'm like, let me see that one. And it was like half the price. Uh -huh. So clearly we're not gonna <laughs> we're not gonna lose that. Yep. That will come with a monthly maintenance fee though. So that's gonna be about a hundred dollars a month for e any any contract we do that they have. Yeah. Yeah. And what that co co covers is um, it covers like if we run out of toner, all toners included in that, if it breaks down they come fix it for free. <laughs> Uh, so it's definitely a good deal to have that in place. They will chart. We get at, we get allocated X amount of copies, whether it be color or black or white. Then if we go over that, we pay a, a heavily reduced price. Um, so um, we're excited. The one we have is is very antiquated. It is, and we have people up there fixing it like once every month, month and a half probably. Aren't they losing parts for it too? Like yeah, so find the parts. It's, it's so old. Yeah, yeah. It's older than me. We band-aided it as, as much as we could. Yep, and that is all I have for the city manager report. I would be happy to entertain any questions or comments. Council, any other questions on the city manager report? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Bridger, just had a couple quick questions. One, I wanted to ask, uh, online water bill payments, how's that going and how many is it? I, I can get an update from Kathy for as far as number of accounts. Um, I think we have uh, every now and then we we'll have somebody not happy about the fee they have to pay or if it goes over 100 bucks, they have to pay twice. Um, but I'll get an update on the number of online accounts we have and stuff like that. Sure. And then just one other one, back to the, uh, I don't get to go into too much discussion of annexation. I know it was brought up a few months ago about uh, going south uh, mm -hmm. towards Meadowview with that. But also, I don't know if it's something you would be able to touch on or how Mr. Kit could as well. Um, I know 571 Grill has always been interested in the city annexing out there because they want water. Mm -hmm. I know uh, how we had discussed that with Mr. Um, I, uh, I don't want to Tim. Well, yeah, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say the name out, but oh. yeah. Um, I, do you have any update on that? No, I've spoken with him a couple of times, and it's a difference of cost uh, to get water sewer directly just for him or get it for the whole neighborhood. If it's just for him, there's a minimum. However, the city, the city has to look at the possibility of that trunk line going to, uh, to a manhole sitting out in front of his business that could potentially collect that, that whole neighborhood. And the city is usually on the hook for any additional upsizing to be able to take that on. So uh, I've had an engineering firm so far at no cost try to give me as much information um, without digging in and getting cost because the elevation changes a lot back in that area. So we're going gravity, uh, grinder system, combo system, just for him, how much do we have to cover if I can't get it covered with a grant. So the city <coughs> could be on the hook even with a grant uh, to cover portion, he cover portion. And a long time ago I had mentioned that he needs to get around to all the homes and survey who really wants this and who's willing to put up some funds because all these funds have to be secured prior to going for the green application and what potentially may be a loan. So, so if, it, if it was to go out just for his business alone, he would be required he, he would have to he would have to foot the whole bill for himself uh, and same with the residential part the city does not have a um, any room to fund any of the project um, the water and wastewater would fund that and I am able to get some portion covered you know prob probably it's, it's no guarantee I just sent through the OPWC meeting and um, the funds are getting limited and it's getting very very competitive um, so 
there's there's a couple different answers obviously for you. Um, but I have talked with him. I am going to reach out again because I guess he had asked and left me a voicemail. We had a big issue with that. But we, I got to get back with him and try and figure out uh, if that neighborhood is actually want to do it or if it's just going to be him and how, how we go about the upsizing if it needs to take place. Thank you very much. Right. Council, anything else for Mr. Bridge on the city manager report? Hearing none. We're now moving to comments from members of the public. Please limit comments to five minutes or less. Mrs. Manaman, Mr. Craybacher, you'll be next. Thank you. Rhonda Manaman, 317 North Adams. Um, I'd like to talk about the noise ordinance. I was asked to complete some research. I have done that. May I hand that out to you? Yes, ma'am. So what I was asked to do by a member of council was to look at the existing ordinance and um, provide some feedback regarding all of the discussions that we've had on what needs to be changed. So um, I'm a project manager by trade. If you consider the normal red, yellow, green um, highlighting, um, on the copy that you have, there's about two dozen or more green highlights. Green moons go, that's positive. Those are things that we've already discussed that are already there, no changes needed. Um, there's two small yellow items. One has to do with the fines that there was discussion about imposing. There doesn't seem to be anything allowing for the increase in the amount of the fine for recurring um, uh, you know, calls. It's yellow, that's a minor item, that's not critical. There's something else about the um, amount of feet from a moving vehicle that music can be heard. Uh, you know, we've talked about the fact that uh, even though there are some concerns about motor vehicles, that's probably another topic and a little bit too much to tackle right now. Um, in terms of what we've all been discussing that is the critical need, off of all of these pages that I just gave you, there's two red items. One is the fact that our ordinance only covers the nighttime hours, and um, the fact that it's um, a distance of 25 feet from the source of the noise. If you're not comfortable with the decimal meters, everybody was wild about that when we first looked at the uh, uh, other information that had been provided several weeks ago. So I spent some time looking into that. I, I think somebody else did also. If you're not wild about it, then don't go by decimal meters. Go by feet from the source of the noise as the nighttime ordinance is now. If you want to go more than 25 feet during daytime to give people a little bit more leeway, do that. At night, it doesn't say anything about how long the noise has to last before it's considered um, in violation. My assumption is that means it's immediate. The noise happens more than 25 feet from the source. It's between 10 at night and 7 in the morning. It doesn't have to last for two hours or three hours or eight hours, eight constant hours like I heard yesterday. So at night, it seems to be immediate. If you want to go during the day and say, you know what, somebody's having a party in their yard, give them two hours, give them three hours, whatever. We have options here that can easily be done. It sets expectations for everyone. There's a quote here that I'd like to read to all of you. This is part of the existing ordinance this night. So as to disturb the peace, quiet, and comfort of the neighboring inhabitants, or at any time a volume louder, louder than necessary for convenient hearing. And then it goes on to say those who are voluntary listeners there too. I'm not a voluntary listener. It's much louder than it needs to be. We're not talking about a radio. We're talking about amplified music. We're talking about huge speakers. And you're exactly right. Somebody, not only me, I've heard that from neighbors, I've heard that from deputies as well. I'm not the only one that's calling. The deputy shows up, they turn it down, the deputies leave, the music goes right back out. That happens constantly. 
So I did not call yesterday, even though, again, eight hours, constant, eight hours. I did not call yesterday because I knew we had a meeting tonight. I've been putting my faith and trust in our city leaders that I am following the protocol. I've done all the research that was requested. I've put everything in front of you. I've been trusting that action would be taken. Compromise would be found. Everybody would work together. We would make decisions and be done with this and move on to something else. After all this time, if you all decide that you don't want to do that, all of my research has been to waste. And what you want me to do is keep the deputies busy by calling them every time it happens. And that's what you want all of my neighbors to do as well. Then we need to be hiring another deputy because they're going to be busy. Any questions for me? Council? I have none. Do you have any? No. Thank you, Mrs. Mann. <clears throat> Mr. Kraybacher. Oh. The day of presentation. I'm John Kraybacher, 307 North Henry Street. And I just want to go over this packet a little bit. And I want to talk to you about bees. So I'll wait till it's passed out. <clears throat> Not too long ago, Linda came up here and she talked, she asked about bees. And I think there's been some comments about bees. You know, um, and I've asked Randy a little bit, can we have beehives in the city? You know, and I think in a meeting you said, you know, Ed, he doesn't care, we go ahead. And I just wanted to point some things out. And this is for information purposes. So, and you make up your own mind. In the first page, talks about the animals that, that are prohibited within the city. <coughs> you notice bees is not even on there, you know, not at all, you know. Exactly. You know so <coughs> on the back, on the next page, oh. it gives a lot of facts about honeybees. You know, without honeybees, you know, honeybees are good for pollination. They're good for making honey. You know, honey, you know, local honey is, is great for illnesses and you know we really do need our bees I noticed when we did the garden originally that we did not have a whole abundance of them coming around <clears throat> this year with the help of my wife and a few other people we had, we started putting um, certain flowers that attract them and they are starting to come around and this year our produce is a lot better than it was last so this gives, you know, certain facts from the National Geographic, you know, about bees. You know, um, honeybees are super important pollinators for flowers, fruits, and vegetables. This means that they help other plants grow. Bees transfer pollen between the male and female parts, you know, allowing plants to grow seeds and fruit. I won't go through the whole thing because I would like for you to read that, you know. And one of the things that uh, Mr. Lindsay asked at the meeting what I think it was you bill that uh, about liability however about who if somebody got stung or whatever according to house bill number 392 that was passed you know this year you know it says here a person that registers and I don't know how to pronounce that word a b a p i I A R Y under section 909.02 of the revised code is not liable for any personal injury or property damage that occurs as a result, result of a bee sting <coughs> or multiple bee stings by bees. So, and it continues on with that. So there is a state, you know, a house bill that. One of the things that reason why we brought this up because we've, we've from Ohio State University, uh, extension service, there has been a lot of interest in doing classes on beekeeping. And that's why we're bringing it up, because, you know, we like the hives, you know, but there's also a lot of interest. And so on the next page, it comes from the Ohio State Beekeepers Association, 
on what they will be teaching if we decide to do this. And it probably won't be, you know, if we do decide, it won't be until several months away. It's not going to be tomorrow, it's not going to be next week or next month or whatever. You know, and this is all in connection with something that's happening at the library. At the library later on this month or maybe the first of the month, I didn't write down the exact date, they're going to start doing entrepreneurs class. Already they have six to seven people signed up in Ohio State's coming in and showing how they can open up small business within their home. So I'm just bringing this to you as information. I don't think an ordinance is, since it's nothing prohibited in the, in the original ordinance, you know, about stopping it, and I don't, so, unless I am completely off base with that. I notice in the ordinance that you've given to us, it doesn't mention anything about chickens or, or anything like that, which I know is in a livestock Correct me if I'm wrong. Like, I'm pulling up the code right. Yeah, now. I was just looking for it myself uh, up here because yeah, I think it's this is for like bats, bears, cats, cheetahs, jaguars, snakes, crocodiles, caimans. But I think this is for like more exotic animals. <laughs> and I believe we have an ordinance on file that's more geared towards livestock, like cows, sheep, goats. Exactly. I was, but, I, but there's I, nothing I on bees. None of that. Yeah, but there's nothing on bees at all. Yeah. Even in that ordinance. You know, well, I think it states uh, livestock, and it, do bees consider uh, livestock? I don't know. That's a good question. No. I don't think so. You want to think so? Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Kraybacher, I, uh, since the last meeting, I reached out to some agriculture people to get the definition of bees, and I thought I had the paperwork here with me. I thought I brought it, but evidently I grabbed the wrong packet. Uh, but I can get it for you or, or scan it and send it to you. Uh, they, and I wasn't even aware of this, back in 1904, they've got a, they passed a house bill, and I'm thinking it's like 512 or something, to where bees was put into the agriculture uh, classification as livestock, and same thing as a goat, pig, chicken, whatever, and I questioned them on, I said, well, bees, they just fly around. They said, yes, you're right, and they pollinate. But when you have an actual hive, then they become livestock, according to the uh, Agriculture Department of U.S. Agriculture. The, uh, they also told me, which they I actually learned quite a bit from talking with them, the beekeeper has to be registered. The mm -hmm. hives has to be registered. They have to right. be inspected. I think he said every, or she's told me every one to five years after it's established or something, uh, there's fees and stuff involved, which would naturally all be on you guys. But the problem, and I'll have, like I said, I'll get the, the documentation and send it to you. Uh, if bees are classified as agriculture due to this house bill, Back in 1904, I don't see that we have any choice but not to do it because it's the same classification as a pig and a goat and a chicken. And I'm thinking, it don't make sense to me. And I was on the phone with them probably for about two hours kind of trying to argue it. And they said, that's what it is. I'm going, okay. And I said, I thought I brought the paper with me because I knew you'd be here tonight or I assumed you would be. So I could show it to you, but I, I, evidently I don't have it. Well, you know my email address, so that's... You also know where I'm I live. sure I've got it. Uh, yeah. And the, if it is, then, you know, why don't we, you know, <laughs> make an, a, what do you call it, uh, amendment to the ordinance, then, that we have? I'm looking because it's... Council, anything else about Mr. Lindsay Lux? The... Oh, oh, if, if I'm, no, I didn't find it. Uh, it's... I, I grabbed the wrong packet off my desk. Yeah. This is on the noise stuff, actually, that I grabbed for tonight. Uh, well, I know Dewey. The only problem I would have, Mr. Graybacher, with amending the ordinance to allow bees is not too long ago, a family came because they had a pot belly pig, and nobody wanted to do that because it's a farm animal. I agree, a bee and a pig is but like California is to Hawaii, you know, very far apart. But it's still in the it's still in the same classification. So unless council as a whole wanted to do something, that would be entirely up to us. But 
since it's under the agriculture guidelines of, of the U.S. Ag Agriculture Department, I don't see how we should or could do that. I mean, yes, we, we can do whatever we want here in the city because we're, you know, uh, thank you, a home rule, home rule, rule state city. Well, like I said, you know, an amendment would be very good to do. So anyway, anybody else? Something. Uh, thanks for coming again. I like this idea a lot. I mean, I think, uh, and, and Mr. Lindsay, thanks for saying what you said, because that's what I was actually thinking. You know, bees are here regardless. You know, uh, we step on them, our kids step on them, we get stung at the four, at the drive ins, or whatever. They're always around, but it's interesting that they, you know, if you group them to a hive, it changes the, the whole concept. Um, I mean, I would be open to looking into it and, and seeing maybe if other cities do do similar things. I mean, we read all the time that bees are endangered and, uh, you know, it seems like, you know, when we were, you know, when I was a kid, there were, there were bees everywhere, but now everyone's getting their yard sprayed and uh, the farmers are spraying their crops and it's really mm -hmm. putting a, uh, you know, putting a problem out there for them. <laughs> I, I think it would also be really, really cool and neat educational tool for, for young, young people as well. Mm -hmm. Something we couldn't do yeah. without causing any problems. But uh, I definitely like the idea, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kraybacher. Mrs. Kraybacher. <clears throat> Sorry, my bad. I think so. You never talked, so I don't see anything. Pat Kraybacher, 307 North Henry Street, New Carlisle. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to come up here, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Manager, and the rest of the staff. Um, I just wanted to comment on the noise ordinance. Um, I think noise is a very subjective thing, and it's hard to capture um, Ms. Manaman's situation in any kind of written document. And I will share one example from our next door neighbor. We never filed a complaint against this neighbor, but we don't have central air in our house, so our windows are normally open. It turned out that his garage is like butting up within five feet of our yard and um, at 10.30 at night, he would gun his motor, his, his rod, hot rod, in his garage and, and reverberate really the whole house and we were working then and I would be in bed at 10.15 but at 10.30 you could set your watch, you know, that car would get gunned and I know other neighbors were disturbed. So how, I mean, that's a recurring thing that happened and John and I did not complain because we do believe that we're called to be good neighbors. Um, but I also can sympathize with Ms. Manaman and her situation. And I, I, I really hope that um, the chief can go and maybe do an intervention with both her and her neighbor because it's, if it goes on all night long, I mean, how, how do you deal with that? So, so my comment to council is noise is very subjective. And your written policy may or may not address. So I think it's important to get the neighbors together and hopefully um, have some kind of conversation besides somebody just showing up and telling them to turn it off. You know what I'm saying? So I, I commend that um, suggestion from the, the, the Chief Underwood. And, um, I just think council needs to be aware. Noise is very subjective. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mrs. Kraybacher, the, the, the house and the gentleman you're referring to, thankfully, is no longer living there. Uh, but yes, you're right. He would also, he had that motorcycle. I don't even think, I think he had straight pipes on it. Because when he come by my house, it would actually reverberate and rattle my windows. And I think one of these days I'm going to throw something out there and try to hit them spokes. But he, he I never did. And he said he'd set the stop, line, stop sign and just sit there and rev it. Yes, it was annoying as all get out to me. I don't understand why people, when they have vehicles like that or motorcycles, why they take the baffles out of them. And that's exactly what it sounded like. Uh, but he would set Yes, he would. Every night at 1030, he, he would either fire his, I thought it was his motorcycle all these years. But if it was a car, yes. It, it, and I heard it down the street from him. But, you know, he, he wasn't a very good neighbor anyways. But, you know, I don't want to speak ill of people now. But, you know, the, uh, thankfully, he, he is gone. And he, we have great neighbor, great neighbor down there now. 
in regards to this, it's happening during the day. It's not, not the problem <coughs> during the night. Yeah. <coughs> I just wanted to clarify with that. Yeah, you said during the night. This is happening during the day. It's <coughs> so I just want to make sure that was clear. So, uh, Comments? Any other comments? Or oh, council, go ahead. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Again, yeah, thank you, Mr. Uh, Sergeant Arnwood, again, do you think that this could be taken care of without getting too deep into this as far as the structure of the ordinance? I'll say this, we'll certainly try. I'll, I'll set up an appointment with you. Do that after the meeting. <coughs> Good news. Can, can I just say, before I ever called the deputies, I've talked with them multiple times. I've tried to be neighborly, um, and it's just, if there's something that you can do in talking with them, that would be fine. I'm willing to talk. I went to this extreme because I tried that first, and it just, it didn't go anywhere. Just so you'll know, I'm sure you haven't thought about it, or maybe even council hasn't thought about it. We can't just cite someone or arrest someone with little to none, uh, I'm going to say evidence. You had eight hours yesterday. You could have called us in. You chose not to. I don't care if you call us every 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. Everybody hear that? Well, they don't have to hear it. I, yeah. Anybody in here knows that. <clears throat> okay. But I, but I, some I but some of the deputies. Mrs. Mrs. Manaman, let him finish, please. Okay. We're going to do everything we possibly can. Noise in the daytime, I, we'll probably write 100 tickets tomorrow for noise in the daytime. That we think successful. What I think successful, you may, you may not think it's successful. If a person working, one of our deputies working third shift, and we talked about this a little bit ago, is trying to get some rest and you mow in your yard, and your yard's next to theirs, is that excessive? It, sometimes it takes two, three hours to mow a yard. You know, I would like to try to settle this without getting into those types of issues. Um, you know, we all have rights. We have responsibilities also. And that's what a lot of people don't remember, is along with our rights, we have responsibilities. And you have a right, it's your property, you have a right to maintain your property, to have fun on your property, as long as you're not hurting others. When it becomes ex excessive or an issue, then we have to intervene. And I said earlier, these problems are the toughest complaints to deal with. They're, all, they're almost never settled. And we have two calls on record. I'm going to go in tomorrow and do a complete search of all the calls we've had from you or anyone around you in your address about noise complaints. If we don't have a lot of a lot to go on, there's not much we can do. I mean, if if you had a petition of, of 15, 25 people about there was a noise problem, I'm sure they would entertain that fact, that there is a noise problem. But we have just you complaining. I'm not saying it's not legitimate. We just have one person complaining and, and asking us to buy decimal readers. Um, there's a lot of research goes into that. Just a minute, please, and I'll let you answer. There's a lot of research goes into that, and uh, we don't have one at the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. We don't have one at the sheriff's office. Um, there's little need for it. We get complaints all the time about noise. We go, we leave, they turn the noise back up. Sometimes it's, it's not because we don't want to come back. Sometimes we can't come back. And so and also, that's a pretty low priority. But fortunately, there's not a lot going on here. I'm going to meet with our deputy in just a few minutes after this meeting's over with. And I'm just going to have her sit on, she comes on at 3 o'clock, I'm going to have her sit on the property the rest of the week whenever she, whenever she has a chance. She can sit in front of your house and do her paperwork, she can sit down the street, Whatever it takes. We want you happy. And if 
if you can come up with another way to resolve this, that would be wonderful. I don't want anyone bothered. And if it's inconvenience to you, uh, we'll look into it. I don't know what else I can do or say. So I didn't ask to buy decimal meters. That was an option that was discussed. That was an option that was in some of the materials that, that Randy's research did and provided. So I did not ask to buy decimal meters. That was just an option that was discussed. Everybody kind of liked that when it was first brought up, but I didn't ask for that. Um, from what my neighbors have told me, what other deputies have told me going back three years, I'm not the only one that's calling. Um, it's usually um, Friday or Saturday or Sunday. It's usually not through the week. Most of the time it's not. Um, I'm not asking for quiet that you can hear a pin drop. That's not my expectation. <laughs> Um, I live in town. I know there's going to be noise. I think if somebody wants to have that level of noise, they should move out of town. So um, I have tried. I talked repeatedly. That wasn't working. That's what brought me up here. Let me ask you if, this. Is, if, there if, common, if, is there a common time this happens? Or is it just sporadic any time? There is common times. Can you just manage them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be happy to meet with you. I, I've had several discussions with Deputy Allender about it, and again with, it with me now. And then I'm, I'm, we have people in here driving around all day, or, all day. Mm -hmm. And if they hear it, they can give me a call. Also, just now mm -hmm. give me the hours, and we'll all be your ears. Yeah, I say after the meeting, if you just want to get with Sergeant Underwood, Miss Manaman, uh, mm -hmm. to discuss those times uh, with them, and then try to work out a resolution. I think that'd be the best because, mm -hmm. unfortunately, your five minutes is up. So, thank you. All right. Any other comments from Mr. Grimm? Dale Grimm, 114 South Main Street. I want to make sure I heard something correctly. It sounded to me like Mr. Cobb asked for a printout of the, legal, the payments for legal fees. Is that correct? I presume. And then I thought I heard Mr. Bridge say, he can provide it, but would have to be redacted because it's not public information. Some is of the a items. city council member the same as the general public? We would redact, yes, for certain items, especially if it had to do with, like, say an employee had an HR issue that we had to deal with, they would be blocked out because the council does have any day-to-day -day operations. If that person maybe had a medical injury, that would be blocked out as well. So not everything would, but some items on that would be redacted. Council is responsible for handling our money. I understand that. Council will see the dollar amount, but if it comes to anything that is that our, our attorney would need to redact, she has every legal right to redact that to preserve HIPAA laws. Yeah. So not again, not everything would be reacted. I'm not saying anything would, but if there's something on there that our attorney feels as though it needs to be redacted to prevent us from further recourse, she will do so. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments from members of the public? Hearing none, Mrs. Berner. Okay. Uh, resolutions tonight, there are none. Moving on to our ordinances. Ordinance 18-16. An ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Make a motion to adopt ordinance six, or I'm sorry, ordinance 18-16. Second. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance, this is a, a housekeeping ordinance every year. We have to do a two-step process anytime we do any kind of assessments for street lights. Last council meeting, they approved a resolution with what we call a resolution of necessity. They approved that, which puts us into the second round of it, which is an ordinance determining to proceed. So with that being said, what this ordinance is, is allows us to proceed with assessing people's uh, property taxes for street lighting. All right. Council, any comments, questions, or concerns? Nope. Mrs. Berner. Okay. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. 
Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. <clears throat> ordinance accepted 60. Moving on to ordinance 18 17. And ordinance levying assessments for the improvements of certain <coughs> public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Mr. Lowry. And uh, explanation of ordinance 1817, um, as 1816 uh, 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 determined to proceed, ordinance 1817 actually allows the, uh, us to assess your taxes through the auditor's office. <clears throat> Council? Nothing? Mrs. Byrne? All right. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Ordinance accepted, 6-0. Ordinance 18-18, an ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Make a motion to adopt An explanation of this ordinance. Um, this is another ordinance we do every year. Uh, this particular ordinance deals with um, anyone who has maybe fallen on their utility accounts. Maybe they moved out and they're no longer in service, but they owe the city some actual money for that water account. Utility account, excuse me. Council, any questions? No, Mrs. Berner. Right. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? <coughs> yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Ordinance accepted 6 0. Ordinance 18 19, an ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. Council? Mayor, make the motion we accept. Second. <coughs> At least people are mo moving forward with that, Mr. Bridge. An explanation of this ordinance. Uh, likewise, with the utility accounts for our weed, basically we go out and cut the grass, we abate the property, you don't come in and pay it within a certain amount of time, we assess it to your property taxes. So this ordinance uh, <laughs> uh, addresses and their dollar amounts that we paid to cut the grass last year. And this year a little bit. Council, any comments, questions, concerns? Hearing none, Mrs. Burr. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Ordinance accepted 6 0. <coughs> ordinance 18 20, an ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected nuisance abatement fees for collection with real estate taxes. Council? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Lowry? Mr. Shammy? An explanation of this, um, this actually allows us to, um, these are our nuisance abatements, so we have grasses, grass abatements. Nuisance abatements are like trash, mattresses, excuse me, et cetera, that we go and clean up. Um, you don't come and pay the bill within, I think, 10 days, then we assess your property tax. Council? Mrs. Berner. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? <coughs> yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Ordinance accepted 6 0. Right, moving on to other business, Mrs. Berner, do you mind reading down to D but not E? Sure. Um, work session. <coughs> we have a work session scheduled August 23rd here at Smith Park Shelter House at 7 p.m. Also, it, it will be our appointment of our new council member at 7 p.m. also. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1 30 p.m. until 2. Crime Watch meeting is September 12th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. And the city offices will be closed on Monday, September 3rd and in service for Labor Day. <coughs> Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, we've been talking <coughs> for a while now on the noise ordinance. Uh, hopefully, with Sergeant Underwood and Ms. Mannerman, Getting together with the offending party, hopefully something can be solved uh, through that route. 
So in light of that, I'd like to make a motion to counsel, cancel the work session for this coming Thursday as far as the, the work session on the noise ordinance and, and those things. We still need to have the special meeting for, for the uh, vote on the appointment. <clears throat> Council, second. 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 Shammy. <coughs> yes. Who first? <coughs> Was there anything else on that agenda for, for that work session? No. no. The same stuff that we've covered at each meeting three yeah, times. We've had three meetings on it, so. Is there any discussion on it? That? I think we've gone over everything. I think it's time, if we want ordinances that we've discussed, I think it's time that one of us motion them to uh, make them law. <coughs> we keep going around and around and around on these meetings, on these committees, and nothing gets solved. <coughs> I agree with Mr. Lindsay. I think that if we're going to do it, let's, let's make the motion to legislate it. So, Council, anything else on that? No. Mrs. Berner, will you call the roll? Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor. <coughs> yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted. Six zero. So there's no work session. No work, no session, work session. But, but we, we will still have, have a special, special meeting, meeting for the appointment. Starting at seven p.m. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. And then any other comments from council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. <laughs> <clears throat> the uh, in light of having the oh, what did I do with that? The union contracts coming up. I'd like to make a motion to work to direct the law director or Mr. Bridge to direct the law director to bring forth an ordinance as an emergency ordinance at the next meeting to have two council members setting on that. Uh, uh, negotiation committee with the uh, city manager. Is there a second? <clears throat> Any comments from council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Does that leave? I know that and what I'm asking is, is I can't remember who brought it up on the district very Yeah. Well, is, well hang this on. Is. <laughs> We're going to let Mr. Lowry finish the, here. The concern was, is, you know, as council, you know, executive sessions are private. But when the council members in a particular meeting, it's usually public, and union negotiations are not public. So, I'm curious, is there a name? As, there? as it. Wait uh, one second. Mr. Bridge, we'll let Mr. Bridge respond. As long as you're under the three threshold amount, it's, you can go into closed meetings. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's not, I don't want to say closed meetings, not the word. You can have meetings that aren't public. Yeah. Yeah. So, the legislation that Mr. Cook wanted to do with the two council members, I was actually at a conference. And a lot of municipalities are starting to send at least two representatives from council in with the administration for, for negotiations. Okay. Now we can't do more than that because you can't, like, we couldn't have union negotiations in an open setting like this. Yes. That, that's illegal on a federal level, um, <coughs> almost positive. Um, but you can limit to under that sunshine amount and then they can accompany to be a majority me. of our board yeah i'm just me personally i'm not crazy about this idea i mean i see the reason behind it uh, you know i know the rain you work for us you go and you negotiate those and you report it back to us i feel that we have done a good job with that it's not and, and i just think in my opinion will add confusion uh, i see it slowing down the union negotiation process <coughs> I don't think some of the union members that work for the city are very fond of this idea either. Um, but that's just my two cents. Guys, a question is this something you're just sitting in there or you're actually going back and forth and debating with me? That would be my concern. Mr. Cook. I think this thing is going to be open for, for discussion at any point in time. Mm -hmm. I think if you read the union. <clears throat> agreement with the city there are a couple of things in there that should not be in there and I won't go into detail at this point and I think Mr. Lowry and I have discussed those so I think we need to get counsel on there 
in order to draft this, <clears throat> there also was a move to have additional or a member of council on a lot of the committees. And I think this is going to open up the communication and transparency in all aspects of city government. Council, anything else? No. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, <clears throat> concerning Mr. Bridges' question, I think that whoever is on the two council members that's with you in the negotiations, <clears throat> if you should probably be the mouthpiece, I think. And if, if uh, whoever it is has a question, can write it down and have you ask it. Uh, I don't know uh, if that's even legal or if it would be legal for a council member to ask the questions in as far as the negotiating, I think it would be. Uh, I don't really have a problem with the council member asking questions because they may think of something that you don't. Not that you don't do your job and you're not good at your job, but I think instead of you over here by yourself with lawyers that we have to pay hundreds of dollars an hour to be there sitting there uh, talking, you know, that maybe a couple of council members who has union experience in negotiating might be an asset instead of a hindrance, in my opinion. I welcome the opportunity to see where it goes. My concern is that the employees are not going to be too receptive to two people they really don't know. That, so I think open line of communication. Yeah. I think, well, first off, I think once the motion is approved to let that draft it, we'll have a clear understanding mm -hmm. of what everyone's rights and responsibilities are. Yeah. I just think that we need to make sure that there's only one open line of communication because we got hourly employees that don't know you guys. Yeah. You know, I welcome the opportunity. It's not like I'm fighting this at all. I think it would be a great move to see how it goes. Um, but we'll find the ins and outs of what can be done once Lynette starts drafting. I do believe she's, uh, she said that we could do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have to really detail how council wants it. How has the, the other city? <coughs> Sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, I mean, this would have to be ready for us at the next council meeting. Yeah, I would kind of know <coughs> because, to clarify because, you want that. Negotiation as a starting sometime next month. We haven't set a date for those yet. But it's sometime next month, and it would have to come to us as an emergency ordinance, and that's coming from a guy that absolutely hates emergency ordinances. Sure. I voted against a lot of them just okay. because it was an emergency. And to and clarify it, our attorney does sit in with our union negotiations. I, I know that. I know that. Yeah, sure. Gotcha. I know that. You have anything else on, the, on this matter? Uh, All right, I'll together. Go. go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. Go ahead. Just one other thing. If this passes and say it doesn't work out or it's, you know, it's just, you know, it's an error kind of become messy and confusing, do we have to track this in order to move the two council members? You see what I'm saying? Can we just pull them in and it's done over? Yeah, I think we just withdraw. Well, the the just make a motion to repeal the ordinance. Yeah, the yeah. Ordinance yeah, I don't think it's going to go there. I think it's going to, like Mr. Cook said, I think it's going to help the transparency out. I have no problem with two council members sitting there with me. I truly don't. But I just ask respectfully that you guys understand that you know we are responsible for the day-to-day -day stuff. I welcome them being there. Uh, but if there's any kind of um, uh, uncomfortable there with our hourly employees, you got to understand this would be the first year we've done it. Yeah. You know, I think the second year, if we do it, it'd be a little easier in a third year. That first year, I don't know what to expect. You know, the union may come back, and as soon as they know this is going to go on, they already may start fighting it, for all we know. You know, I don't know what their position is going to be once the actual motion is made <coughs> and the draft legislation is going to be drafted. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But, but the council does set policy, so, I mean, it doesn't matter if they like it or not, you know, <laughs> when it comes right down to it. So, I... Uh, I, I yeah. have a question just mm -hmm. to avoid that one. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, what, what do other cities do? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, guess I know like Asheville does it where they're just, they're mute, but then they go into a meeting and they're like, hey, this is what we want. And then they're like, see, that's possible. Mm -hmm. Or, and I don't, I don't know if we want them to be like, this is, Mr. Bridge, you're going to take a back seat. This is what we're going to do. I, that, 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 that worries happen. me. So, that, yeah. yeah. But I think once we get the legislation in front of us, we'll actually know what we're going to be building <clears> on. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't care about this. I think it's a great step in the right direction, but at the end of the day, the city manager, whether it be me or whoever the case may be, 
they need to take the lead on this negotiation. If your council member is going to be there, that's great. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have a chance to have one on one discussion. They can tell me what their concerns are, but we can't have three different faces arguing for the same thing. And I yep. think whatever to determine what council member goes in there, they meet with us, me, and we go through that and I find out what council wants to change on that, uh, on the uh, union agreement. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but as far as that first year goes, I think we err on the side of caution and then we, we, we do things how it makes everyone comfortable. Yep. And then see how it goes. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Council, anything else on this? Nope. Mrs. Berner. <coughs> Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lowry. No. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted, 5-1. No. Council, Mr. Lowry, you had something. Oh, is that more? Uh, oh wait, oh, wait. No. we might have one more. Okay. Mr. Cook. I have several things. Oh. Uh, Look here. Our workstation notices. I would like to see the line on the bottom of those notices that basically says that we can entertain and talk about anything legally that can come before council during that work session. That will preclude us from just talking about the line items. There's a lot of times that we need to talk about different things and we can't do it because we've got to put them off until we can make another work session. How does council feel on that? I just think it opens up the spiral, in my opinion. And I don't know if that'd even be acceptable within the Sunshine Law. City or the school board does it. Why can't we? That'd be a good question for our attorney. All right. Second factor. In our tax code, do we have a tax amnesty period? No, I don't know. I would like to see a, a week of tax amnesty <clears throat> put in that tax code. That way we can give the people that owe the money amnesty to get it paid. If they don't pay it within that week, then they can be, honestly, I believe, be taken to court for legal prosecution. So are you going to make a motion to that? Or are we I'll saying? make a motion to that. Effect. All right. Second. All right, what is it? To, to have legislation drawn up for tax amnesty. Did anyone, did you look at the tax code before or is it mentioned in there at all? Or it's are we, not mentioned in there. It's not mentioned at all? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Second. Second for Mr. Cobb, yeah. And Mr. Lindsay. This discussion will go with Mr. Lindsay, then I'll. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, a month ago or so, when we was discussing taxes and amnesty and, and whatever other words you want to use for it. <clears throat> I believe our city law director said that it is in uh, the code. Now where it's at, I don't know. It may be state, it could be federal. More than likely state, because I know the state has an amnesty thing. So if it's in the ORC, then I think that would, would apply since we don't have a law, the ORC, we default to the ORC. Is that not correct, sir? Mr. Heck? That, that is correct. Oh, you talking to me or Mr. Heck? Well, sorry. he was looking at me like, <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I am not uh, familiar with that answer, but uh, I'll have to look into it. Mr. Bridge, if you think it's correct, um, we'll go with that right now, but I will get a, an answer to you about that. <clears throat> well, based on the comment from our law director, uh, she said it was there. Now, I don't know where it's at. Like I said, it's more than likely in the ORC. And because if we don't have a law in the books for something, then we automatically default to the ORC. Uh, another example of that is the, well, I'll just skip that because it may start an argument. <clears throat> but I think we would default to the ORC if we don't have anything on the books for that. Council, I am sure do you have anything? Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> Mr. Cobb, I just want to be fair and balanced. Mr. Kiko, we discussed the stop sign down at uh, Linden and uh, Scott. 
Is there a motion? We have a motion on the floor. Oh. Yeah, that's all right. Did, any other comments on the topic of tax amnesty? No? Mrs. Berner. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. In light of our financial situation with the attorney, I'm going to have to say no on this one. Mayor Reynolds? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Lowry? This is for the... To have the legislation drafted for tax amnesty, not to put a stop sign. Okay. <laughs> no. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Yes. Cobb? Motion to <coughs> four to two. Right. Now, Mr. Cobb, you like it? Can I, I just, what, uh, you have a motion for the attorney to draft legislation? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, it seems like to me you guys should shouldn't there be more stipulations as to what that amnesty program entails, opposed to the attorney just blindly writing whatever the law Is it a dictate. week? Is it two weeks? Is it well, do you only get it if you only somebody didn't pay the year before? Did they he stated a week. Same? He stated a week. I stated a week. Okay. Okay, but there's all the tax any things I've read. There's a lot. There's a lot of stipulations in it. Like if they did it last year, they can't do it again this year. If they've done it two years in a row, then so I think maybe we should have them. I don't. I mean, she's just blindly drafting legislation, so you guys are going to have to pick and choose with what. If she says she has nothing to go on other than do a tax amnesty, yeah, Mr. Heck. Well, I mean, I, I'm not sure what Lynette knows about this issue or not. As far as myself, uh, I will have to research ORC, um, and Mr. Bridges is correct about uh, additional stipulations. I will have to look into this, and without any more guidance, um, that's going to be a prerequisite before I can draft it. I'd be happy to look into it and report back. Um, but uh, I'm going to need a little more narrowed guidance. So should we withdraw? Oh, wait, 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 one second. Should we withdraw it? We we'll vote on it again to remove it, and then have Mr. Cook submit something at the next meeting that has more guidelines for you. If, if that's what you wish, um, Mr. Cook, would you be acceptable to that? Fine. So we'd have actual guidelines instead of blind blind. And then, Mr. Mayor, would you like me to look into it to report next meeting? That is not my jurisdiction. That is Mr. Bridges. <laughs> No, it, that would be it's on behalf of council. So you guys it would be a majority of council. Yeah. So what? I, I, do, do you guys need to do a motion for him to research it, and then someone needs to bring information, unless you want to pay our attorneys to go and say we want this, 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 we, and this. That's all we want. So I think you need a motion to say yes. We want me to instruct them to look into the matter, and then you're going to need maybe some somebody's going to have to draft some give some examples for them guidelines in there. Yeah and then resubmit that back. Or we can just have the legal department look at other cities and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's going to be best if a member of council were to do this and to submit it to bring down the cost of a legal bill. Uh, and I think we would now, correct me if I'm wrong, we would need a motion to re repeal what we had just set forth, correct? Correct. So do we have a motion for repeal? So moved. Second? One of you guys want to second it? Oh, you uh, down here. <laughs> I thought you said second. Oh, oh no, 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 no. The chair's second. not allowed to second. Sorry, I always say second. The chair's not allowed to second or motion. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Sham. What was yours? Yes. Yes. Okay. Re repelling the original motion, Mr. Cook. Yes. 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 <clears throat> Mr. <Yes>. Lowry. <laughs> All right. Motion accepted. Five to one. All right. Now, Mr. Cobb, you had something about a stop sign. Mr. Kick, uh, we discussed in the past about the stop sign. Lyndon and Scott. Mm -hmm. What did you come up with? I will take that. I actually emailed council a bunch of paperwork on that a few weeks ago. So um, has council read over that material? Through. Pardon? I actually emailed a bunch of studies that we had done from the Linden one. Um, maybe, well, actually, the, the maybe Tuesday or Wednesday after we originally had the discussion, 
in the email I said, please review all this stuff. It's the study we had done with the Linden Avenue stuff. And you that. not have the email. You cannot get me email. I'm down. Okay. Well, what about the other council members? Because any time that Mr. Cooks needed something, it was printed out and given to him. So I assume that would be the same process. But the problem is, is where's, there's a lot of information that's in those yeah. packets that council needs to have understanding of before we do anything with putting a stop sign out on them. Are you good, Mr. Cobb? Mr. Mayor, I'm going to make a motion we put a stop sign on Linda and Scott. Is there a second? Second. Comments? So the city would be open to liability because what that study says, Mr. Kiko, correct me if I'm wrong, that a stop sign is not warranted okay. there. I would vote no. Any discussion on this? <clears throat> so why don't we maybe at the, at the next meeting take some time to review the stuff and we can pick this up at the next meeting. Is there a motion to table this? So moved. Is there a second? We can table it. Yes, we can. We can table a motion. So, any discussion on the table? No. On the table. Yeah, like discussing the tabling of it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I agree. I agree. I know we've went over this a dozen times in the past ten years, probably. Correct. Oh, Mr. gosh, yeah. It, uh, I mean, and his, his research has come out the same every time. That it's just not <clears> so. It's, it's not from me. It's from a professional engineer document yeah. written. Yeah, this is something that, like I said, we've done at least, to my knowledge, four times in my last seven years here with you. <laughs> four times we'll as well. An opinion. Uh, Do you feel comfortable giving an opinion? Oh, since absolutely. You're... There is absolutely no... I, 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 I don't want to put you on the spot. Pardon me. My name is Terry Hoffman. I live at 316 South Scott Street in that block. Yep. And there's no need for a stop sign there because the people that race down that street at 40 miles an hour know that that's not a cross street and they're going to ignore a stop sign. It would be completely pointless. I don't want to kill somebody down there because they failed to well, make the turn. Well, stop sign is not going to keep someone from getting killed because they're going to ignore the stop sign. Yeah. I, just, I, just, <coughs> I disagree with you on that, ma'am. I've lived there 30 years, yeah. and I've been watching this go on for 30 years. <laughs> All right, Mr. Lindsay. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mr. Kiko, the, or Mr. Bridge, the, the packet that you mailed out, emailed out <clears throat> about the stop sign, I read it, and I'm going to go from memory, so I probably will have it all messed up. I thought it entailed the Linden at 235 is what I thought it detailed at. Am I not correct in that? that? Not in that study. The one we emailed to you was the Linden and Scott. There was another study from some time ago not involved in this last email okay. that you received, but was for Linden and Scott. And there's two paragraphs in it, one for the study of the stop sign. The second was their recommendation of the arrows uh, due to um, no vehicular crashes, um, no um, no intersecting, um, cross intersections, and a driveway does not, is not considered. And then we also sent you the links to specific pages that dealt with stop signs, yield signs, and things like that. It was in that email also. Okay. Right. Council, anything what, else? <clears throat> Go ahead. What is the possibility then if we can't put a stop sign there? Is, is, and we have talked about this before too, two, three, four months ago, about the big eight foot speed, speed bumps to where if you hit them too fast, if you hit them over 25 mile an hour, you're gonna bottom out because your vehicles, your tires are gonna be on both sides of it. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a five foot, I don't even know what the proper name is. I know Van Day has them all through their plats, especially when they have long, long runs. And if you hit them doing 20, most time at 25, 26 mile an hour, it's gonna do, it's gonna jar your vehicle pretty good. Is there any possibility of, of putting something like that on Lyndon and, is that Scott there's on Scott. Lyndon and Scott? You know, like, I don't know, uh, like 25 foot back from the curve, you know, before they hit the curve on both sides. So they have to slow down for that curve. It's something we'll have to look into because I know there's a lot of times there are speed limits associated with speed bumps. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a 25 through there. Mm -hmm. um, so I know there's that issue. 
and two neighbors that live by that, that I have in communication with other service directors that have had speed bumps in the next thing you know the neighbors call because all they hear is rattling all night long because they're hitting speed bumps. Buses, plow trucks, it, um, any kind of delivery vehicles, they all have issues with, with speed bumps. There are some out there, but they're just, they're one of the very, I feel and what I've seen is last resort, mm -hmm. you know, not, not counting signs or anything, but adding, adding any kind of structure to the roadway uh, just becomes another thing. You've got to drive over, plow over, that type of thing. Well, the, I know the ones that, that the city of Vandalia has, they're, they look like they're about six or seven foot wide and they're probably about this high at the highest peak. And, and the plows has no problem going over them. I used to live over them, I used to watch them go over them. But back, and if I may, ma'am, uh, is there any other neighbors down there complaining about anything in that area as far as speed all or wrecks or? All our block complain about the speeders. We stand on the street and we yell at them when they get wrong. So, so maybe, Sergeant Underwood, we can get a deputy to hide in a driveway and see what's happening. <laughs> and that's not legal either, but and, and yes, and Mr. Heck, I know that is not legal. Well, you know, they think they can take these 90 degree curves at, at 40 or 50 mile an hour and they're going to wind up in that yard. In fact, I believe because yeah. Mr. Mm -hmm. Cobb and I have talked to the gentleman on the one corner. They've been through his yard. They've been in that yard across the street going this way they've missed it and lit in that yard i've seen them come down our street so fast that they can't make that turn they end up in the driveway there where mr Steve Baker used to live mm -hmm. i almost bought that house too and believe me i'd have boulders there if i bought it <laughs> <laughs> all right so the question is shall we lay it on the table the council anything else mrs burner <laughs> lowry was the second correct yes ma'am okay mr shammy Mr. Cobb? No. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Five to one. Five to one. All right. Mr. Lauer, you had something. Yeah, I just wanted to have We got about a little over a month away. I just wanted to remind people here the flight cluster is coming. So uh, it'll be on this year on the 5th, 6th, and 7th of October, which is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, as always. So if you guys have anybody that wants to uh, be in the parade or do the float or anything like that, you can always go to the imperialflight.com. There's one kind of good information there on the Facebook page. But uh, Mark, you have to be great here. Oh, actually, I did want to touch on something. Let's go to Randy. Go ahead. Uh, I don't think I, I talked about this yet. Mr. Borby, you know Marshall Borby? Yes. Everybody knows Mr. Borby. Mr. Marshall Borby is like the greatest guy ever. But um, you were talking about the one uh, the Want, looking at the donate to the food pantry. Yes. So Marshall would come to one of our meetings. I don't know where he got the idea. We started looking up what the world record was for the longest line of canned food in the end. And I think he said it was in Canada for like two and a quarter of a mile. So he came up with the idea. He wants to, I think he wants to do it on Sunday during the festival from Friday at you know, 2 30 or Main, out 571 to the airport, where I think he's calling it. Uh, mile of food because it's almost a mile out there but he wants to get people to you know to one exercise come out and walk out yeah. get some exercise to the airport and then also line up the, the yellow line out the airport with canned food and we're going to donate it to one of the you know or multiple places throughout the town and how many, depending on how much we get so i just thought that is fantastic because stephanie and i were actually going to do a uh, food drive in September, so that actually works even better yeah so save the canned goods yes and, and line them up on uh, 571 that is a it, fantastic it, 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 idea. Yeah. So that was all Marshall Gorby's idea. Is the road going to be closed when yeah. you have cans are out there? Well, yeah, it's closed for the yeah, break. Because <laughs> <all the days. laughs> I can just see somebody running that yellow line. <laughs> That's all I have. Right. There are a lot of people. Oh, no, actually, I like it. We, yeah, I know, I know, I know. We are going to drop it. Yeah. You didn't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> We have an executive session tonight to adjourn to executive session for the purpose of conferencing with the law director for the city of New Carlisle concerning intent for court action. We will take a five minute recess, but first we needed a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second.